Busting Indie Myths, Part 9. And in this Busting Indie Myths, we're going to look at the oft-heard Scottish nationalist claim that if Scotland was independent, you can still be British. Oh, what are you worried about? You can still be British after separation. Um, why? Well, because Scotland and England are still going to be on the same island, and the island's called Britain, and so if you live on the island... You're British, so you'll still be British. And I'm like, oh, like from a... I'm well aware, okay, that Scotland and England will still be sitting on the same tectonic plate of the Earth's crust. I'm well aware they're not going to part ways. I'm well aware Scotland's not going to drift off on a tectonic plate over the North Pole. OK, I'm well aware that we'll still be living on the same island. But you know what, mate? This isn't a matter of geology. It's not even a matter of geography. This is a debate about politics and about identity and about culture. And it is in those matters where we'll not be able to be British. Because, as we always say, Britain is... A nation, it's a living organism with interlinking bones and muscles and blood vessels which make up the body and soul of the nation and which can't be separated politically without traumatising those social and cultural blood vessels. And, of course, most Scottish nationalists don't conceive of Britain in that way. OK, if they conceive of it at all, it's like the person who says that we'll still be living on this island. They only see it in a geographical sense. They only see Britain in a geographical sense. And even then, they see it in a derogatory geographical sense. Oh, Britain's just a small island. Britain's just a small island on the edge of Europe. Britain's just a small island on the edge of Europe that's past its day. You know, so even, even then, even then, they are derogatory about Britain's island status. But they certainly don't think of it as a nation. And we addressed that very first, uh, that matter in our very first busting indie myths. But for us, Britain is most certainly a nation, and it's a nation created through time, from the, from the start of time, building social and cultural links, building regal links, which we've just spoken about, and building, of course, political links with the Union of Parliaments in 1707, to the point where we are now sharing, that we have created a body which is sharing the same social and cultural blood vessels. And so what would happen if that political union was to sever is that you would be traumatising that overall body. And we talk about these things in our magazine, Do More Together, when we speak about what it means to be British. What it means to be British. And also when we talk about how the United Kingdom is our great work of time, how it comes together through time, and the sorts of things that give it meaning today. So when people say, what is Britishness? You know, we always point them to, to, this, to this article, which helps to describe it in some considerable depth, I should add. So we want Britain to continue as a living organism. We don't just see it as some kind of uh, a geographical or geological entity in the simplistic way that some of the Scottish nationalists see it. Okay, so the question is, how can we still be British when you have attacked that political and social and cultural union? And secondly, the absolute cheek of these people to say that we can still be British after separation when right now 
the SNP is doing everything it can, even while we are still in the Union, to destroy Britishness and our British identity. From taking the Union Jack off the SNP administration's buildings, only allowing the Union Jack to fly on SNP and Holyrood buildings once a year, to trying to destroy the British Transport Police because it's got the word British in it. Hitherto, they've been unsuccessful at that, but goodness me, they tried for several years. So they have the nerve to tell us that we can still be British when they're doing everything they can to get rid of Britishness while we are still in the Union. Imagine what it would be like if, God forbid, we were to leave and the UK and its associated Britishness were to take a terrible hammer blow as a consequence of that. Imagine what they would get up to. Well, we don't actually have to imagine. That's the interesting thing, because thirdly, we know what happens. Okay, we know what happens when you push, when you have a revolution and you don't accept one of the identities. Because look at the example of the Republic of Ireland. Okay, and note the word Republic of Ireland. Okay, there's no crown there anymore. So they even got rid of that. What, what happened, in fact, in those cases where any kind of symbol of Britishness or association with Britishness was, was essentially driven out. Okay, so if you were pro-British, if you had pro-crown sympathies, didn't matter if you were Catholic or Protestant. Um, you quickly had to go along with the program. And if you didn't go along with the program, then you had to keep your head down and you had to shut up. And if you didn't want to keep your head down and shut up, then you had to leave. And if you didn't want to leave, then you got burnt out of house and home or worse. So, you know, we know that when revolutions happen, the losing side doesn't necessarily get treated particularly well. We've seen it in our own islands in recent memory. So why do the Scottish nationalists pretend that we can still be British? Or they're going to allow us still to be British if there was separation? Well, they're doing that simply because they want to lull us into a false sense of security, a false sense of confidence that, oh, nothing's going to change. Everything is going to be okay. Well, don't fall for it, because if there was such a catastrophe as separation, then the a significant element of the Nationalist Brigade would not allow us to continue to be British. And it would get very difficult for us to actually try to maintain our sense of identity and culture and eventually it would just kind of die out and that would is what would happen so don't imagine that we can still be British after separation because there will be lots of people trying to do their darndest to ensure that we can't express our identity so what can we do in the meantime. Well, what we can do in the meantime is, as we always do, is to keep the British end up, keep the red, white and blue flying high and keep asserting positive things about the United Kingdom on a regular basis. Because if you don't assert positive things about the nation on a regular basis, then the nation just gets lost to memory. And it eventually just dies out naturally anyway. And that's what our magazine Do More Together is is about. We're we're emphasizing we're emphasizing that a lot. As we say as we say here, you know uh, we quote Neil Oliver, Great Britain has been here so long it can be easy to think it just happened. A work of nature like a mountain or an ancient tree. The truth is it was ever a fragile thing. Union is a dream shared by a people and kept real only by their imagination and conviction. If we neglect to maintain it, the temple will fall. All of it will be destroyed, and so the work of centuries will be undone. 
That is to say, as we add here, a nation is kept alive by those who believe in it. And each generation must make it live as a real thing.